Hey guys, sorry it's been a while since I posted a video. I was actually on uh, a trip down to Florida with my family last week and uh, got to see some really cool stuff. I actually did a, a, a 10 mile run exploratory uh, hike through the um, uh, Panama City Conservatory or Panama City Beach Conservatory, I should say. Um, so I went through all the trails back in there and saw all kinds of awesome stuff. I don't really get a chance to do much herping up here because I live in Wisconsin. Uh, it's cold for four or five months out of the year. And generally when the weather is decent, I'm too busy with the breeding season with the, the ball pythons here. I'm not able to actually go out and explore and see what there is around here. I did plenty of that when I was a kid. I was always in the swamps and the ponds and creeks and stuff when I was a kid. So anyway, it was really nice to be down at that uh, Panama City Beach Conservatory doing all that hiking around through there. Um, so I saw a few alligators. I think there's a total of five of them, including a really big one. Um, some, uh, several species of snakes, I think five species of lizards, some tree frogs, a turtle, all kinds of stuff. So it's really nice to be able to get that that need or desire that I have to go out herping. I kind of got, got that out of my system a little bit down there. So it was a great relaxing trip. Got to see some really cool stuff. Now I'm back in the shop and I'm seeing tons of ovulations, lots of gravid females now. This is gonna be a really busy season. My clutch number for the year so far is down quite a, well, a little bit from last year, quite a bit from the year before, but the number of gravid females that I'm seeing is definitely gonna make up for it very soon. So I'm gonna be slammed with babies probably by early, early to mid July, I think. So in this video, I decided to show you guys the Albino Clown Project. Uh, kind of where it's at right now, what a typical albino clown looks like, and then what I envision for the project, what I'm planning on doing to it in the future. So let's get down to the uh, hatchling albino clown. This is a little male. He's actually for sale on my website right now as of filming of this, which is in the first week of April 2021. Guys, I promise I will get a microphone hooked up to me. Um, I actually bought one. I just haven't had a chance to set it up yet. So if the volume isn't great on this video, I'm planning on fixing that. So just please bear with me. Uh, so anyway, that's a typical albino clown. The first gene I added in to this project is Enchi. So this is an albino Enchi clown. You can see the more broken up pattern, reduced pattern overall. A little bit different pattern on the head too. Just something to kind of clean the pattern up a little bit. My albino clowns tend to be really banded with a lot, a lot of pattern, uh, probably no blade in there. Um, so that's an albino clown and albino enchi clown hatchlings. Okay, I'm gonna put these guys away now. And let's see what these look like as adults. This is a monster albino clown female. You can see that the yellow bleeds into the white a bit, um, but this one actually still has pretty decent pattern. You know, you can definitely tell it's a clown, but you know, I wanna do something to, to make the pattern stand out more on this. And this female, she's absolutely huge. She's probably one of the biggest ball pythons that I've owned. Um, she was hatched in 2014 and she's been very reluctant to give me a clutch so far. I've, I've bred her for probably the last four years in a row and she is not produced for me yet. I'm thinking when she does produce though, it's gonna be a pretty darn big clutch. So I can't even remember. I think I'm breeding her to a Toffino Enchi clown right now. So yeah, she's big. I don't even know, like she tips my scales. I'm not even sure what she actually comes in at weight wise, but she's a big girl. Probably at least four and a half feet, maybe closer to, yeah, if you really stretched her out, she might be closer to five, but I don't know. Either way, she's got some size on her. I'm gonna put her away real quick and then I will get out another one. Barely fits in the bag. I keep them in the bag just so I can keep all the snakes that I want to show close to me here. 
I don't have to run around my shop and grab them out of the tubs. Okay. So the next thing I did was added the toffee jean in. So this is a toffino clown. So I, I, I produced a toffino enchi het clown a few years ago. And I bred him to an albino clown to produce this. I don't think that there's enchi in this one. I'm not sure. I really haven't produced very much of this stuff, so I haven't really seen it. But you can see the lavender coloration. You now, a lot of it did uh, turn to yellow, but you can definitely see some lavender highlights in there. Really pretty snake. You know, you can definitely see the pattern better than I think in the normal albino clown. So the next step with this project is to make this a full toffee clown. I think then you're going to really see the, the lavenders come out a lot better. And then with some of the other genes that I'm trying to add into the albino clown and, and toffino, toffino clown or clown project, um, I'm, uh, I'm pretty sure I'm going to be able to get those lavenders and purples to show up better. You know, contrast is everything with ball pythons. If they have great contrast, they're going to look better than if they don't. So I'm really trying to add contrast. Yeah, you can definitely see the lavender the most on her tail too. And like I said, I haven't produced very many of these, so um, it's a little bit hard to say how the lavender will show up on others, but hopefully over the next couple of years, I'll, I'll be able to produce more of them and grow more of them up. Okay, this one right here is a Toffino Enchi clown, I believe. There might be a chance that that's a toffee I can't remember. I'd have to check with the breeding to be sure. But this one definitely has much brighter yellow colors, a little bit of oranges in it, not as much lavender, but the eyes are real dark. So that that's definitely an a indicator that it's at least a Toppino. So, and it's got the Enchi pattern, you know, real um, kind of a little bit of a banded pattern, but fairly reduced overall really nice colors and what's weird is this particular snake actually has a micro scale feel to her like she's really rough scaled and i don't know why that is i mean she feels exactly like a micro scale but she's definitely not part of that project at all Okay, so over the last couple of years, I've been working on making some various hats. So I brought a leopard clown to an albino clown and produced several leopard clown head albinos. And the first year I did that, I produced four leopard clowns in the clutch. All four were females. Um, I did it again and I got all females. And then I bred a pastel leopard clown to an albino clown, and I was able to finally produce a male. And he is right here. So this is a pastel leopard clown, 100% head albino. So I'm gonna be breeding him to some of the Toffino clowns and albino enchi clowns and things like that to see if the leopard pattern in it I don't know if I really would like having pastel in this. I think pastel will probably make it a little bit brighter yellow coloration, but I don't really, um, I kind of want the dark stripe down here. I want that leopard influence to really keep that stripe prominent because this is going to be white on an albino clown. So I think that because this is so, so dark on the normal leopard clown, it's going to be white, like really bright white on it as a hatchling on the albino version of this. And it should stay pretty white as an adult too. So that's my goal with adding leopard into it. So this guy will be doing a lot of breeding for me this upcoming season. And then another gene that I added in to the albino clown project is GHI. I figured another dark gene such as GHI can only help the albino clown project too. So, you know, maybe someday I'll be doing albino 
or GHI leopard clowns. You know, that would be probably a really nice uh, deep yellow snake with a very bright white pattern. And then some other genes that I'm currently adding in for this year is, um, I think I'm breeding a lesser leopard clown to an albino clown, uh, breeding a Taupino Enchi clown to a Taupino Enchi het clown. Um, I'm also breeding a GHI spot nose pastel clown to an albino clown. I really think that spot nose, since spot nose makes such a black uh, pattern clown, I think that, um, and I, you know, I don't have one here yet because I haven't made the hats yet, but um, you know, if I can get spot nose into the albino clown, I really think that that's gonna hold the white pattern as an adult really, really well, because just the normal spot nose clown is, the, the, the blacks on it are really black compared to a typical clown, even compared to the leopard clown. You know, this is more like a dark, real dark chocolate brown kind of. The um, having leopard in there is gonna really make it a lot more um, uh, contrasted in the albino version. And then from there, I can do Batman clowns. I can do, you know, all kinds of GHI clown combos. And, and uh, you know, there's just a lot of really cool things I think that can be done with this project. So, so that's basically the, the kind of thinking and thought process that my mind goes through with figuring this out. Like, I wasn't really that thrilled with the albino clown itself as I grew them up over the last, you know, eight years or whatever I have been producing them. But I, you know, I always look at an animal and say, how can I make this an even better version? And then it's just having the knowledge of knowing how these genes interact with each other and kind of uh, envisioning in your mind what will happen if you add gene A to gene B to gene C to gene D, you know, adding all those together. Sometimes it works out better than I hope. Sometimes it doesn't work out that great, but you know, you got to try. So I'm just over here playing mad scientist, trying to figure all this out and having a lot of fun doing it. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video and I'll be back again, hopefully next week with another video for you. And in the meantime, make sure to check out my website, royalconstrictordesigns.com. See you guys soon.